We are here live with our good friend, Dan Nero. Hi. Hi, Dan. <laughs> Tell us your it's, title, Dan. It's, this is really live. This is really live. Okay, no seven second delay. Uh, no, so watch your mouth. Okay. <laughs> okay. I am uh, one of the stand-ins on Grey's Anatomy. You are, uh, in our cast and crew list, you are our utility stand-in, I believe they call you. Yeah. Which sounds quite sexy. What does that mean? Well, utility means my original guy, uh, Eric Dane, who's no longer with us. Um, but I do have Joe Adler, mm -hmm. intern Isaac. I'll be standing in for him today. Yeah. And <clears throat> somebody else. So, so basically you are a, a multitasking stand-in. Yeah. Pretty much. I, you can, yeah, I you like can, that. You can stand in for pretty near anybody as needed, right? Well, the... <clears throat> what stand-ins should be is about the same height as the actor. And maybe the same coloring a the little The same bit. coloring helps. Yeah. Um, there are times where, well, intern Isaac has blonde hair, so my hair is fine. That works. And uh, I remember you've worn a few wigs here and there to cover I, the bandana one day. Yes, I'll wear the bandana. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of the wigs. <laughs> but, um, yeah, or just a watch cap if yeah. the actor has right. dark hair. Right. So that'll work. Yeah. And so as a, a stand-in, uh, well, first of all, you know, we didn't actually cover, how long have you been with us here at Grey's Anatomy? I started season four. Right. Um, what, you know, I remember my first day here, Kyler, I guess it started just the end of season three, mm -hmm. I think. Got it. Lexi. Yeah. It's all one big boy. Yeah. But I had worked, I'd worked with Kyler on many things, so we were like old Sorry, friends. there's a plane flying over. I hope you can still hear us. We can't hold for sound, but you know. <laughs> and, yeah, and yeah. the funny thing that Kyler or Lexi's number on the call sheet was number 13. Right. And I remember Patrick Dempsey teasing her. Hey, 13, how you doing, 13? Can you just hear him doing that? And she's going, oh, I wish I had another number. But she kept 13. <laughs> we loved Kyler. So, yeah, so you've been with us quite a long time, basically. Um, you know, it doesn't seem like it's all that long, yeah. but I guess it is yeah. for season 12. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Now, in addition to doing uh, stand-in uh, uh, stand work, and again, let's let's talk about that a little bit. So, as a stand-in, mm -hmm. what does that require of you? Well, what uh, what a good stand-in does is watches the rehearsal. Mm -hmm. First, that usually the actors will rehearse with the director, and it'll be a private rehearsal. Right. Then they'll invite everybody to come in, which is known as an open rehearsal an or a mark and a rehearsal. marking rehearsal. Right. And then we'll all watch, and we have to watch the actor like a hawk because uh, we should know every little thing they do. And they'll put marks down on the floor if they go from spot to spot. And, uh, but it's important to know where they look and what they do on certain lines of dialogue. So we have the uh, sides. Or the, sides uh, being a small version of the script, which yeah, of course we can't like show that's spoiling. Right, right. <laughs> um, so yeah, we, we need to know what the actor's doing at all times, and then that's important so that the actors can go away. The actors are the first team. Right. We're known as the second, second team. team. You're, you're the junior varsity. Yeah. 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 So so, uh, uh, so we do the mark and rehearsal. They, they dismiss first team, and then they ask for second team, and, and then, then what happens? Then we will step in, mm -hmm. and uh, it's also useful if we kind of wear the same color that right. they're wearing, color cover, we call it. and. Um, then we'll do we'll go through the action so they can light the scene and the lighting is the most important thing mm -hmm. next to having the camera operating mm -hmm. and uh, then we'll help with the blocking with moving around if the actors move around and so that's why you did have to watch the market rehearsal closely so that you can yes. see whatever movements or standing up sitting down crossing the room sort of stuff happens right right, mm -hmm. right. and um, you know, they'll sometimes, if they're coming in close, they'll want to see where you know you're looking in the right place. Mm -hmm. And then between setups, things will sometimes change a little bit, and they'll cheat movement or the spot where the actor might be. So it's important that you get those tape marks down. And sometimes you have to tell the actor, "Well, we've cheated you over a little bit," or "You're off camera, and this is the eye line for the other actor." There's all kinds of little things right. that that you you do, and you learn along the way. And it, it wasn't something that I ever thought 
growing up, I was going to be a stand-in on Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> you mean that wasn't your dream? Yeah, it, a small child. Yeah. Someday, someday. Yeah. But, so, uh, so, uh, so uh, we actually did have a question asking, what's the difference between being a stand-in and doing background work? Now, you also do do background work. They, they said extra, but we like to call it background, because extra yeah. sounds just so... Cattle so, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. so you do do back and forth. So what, what would be the difference between being a stand-in and being a background artist? Well, there is um, a difference in that when you're on, you're, camera. You're on camera, right. <laughs> so you have to look your best. Yes. Okay. Um, and you have performed as back and forth. I think you've been an anesthesiologist several times I have us. been an anesthesiologist several times, and there were even a couple times when Dr. Knox, our regular anesthesiologist, mm -hmm. was in another surgery, and... I got to be... Do you have a doctor name, or are you just anesthesiologist? I'm just anesthesiologist. You're, sort of, you're nondescript anesthesiologist. Yes. We'll have to talk to the writers about that. Yeah. But so in a couple episodes, I actually got to play. Right. So we see, yeah. we see you every once in a while. Yeah, every once in a while. Yeah. 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 So tell us a little bit about your background. Now, you, you, of course, you did dream of being a stand in at Grey's Anatomy when you were a child. But uh, how did you truly and genuinely you know, come to this? Uh, how, how did you come to this? Yes, path? how how did I get how here? How did you get here? Um, it's kind of a family thing. I come from a show business family. Um, my stepfather was an actor, and um, did did bit roles here and there. I also did some extra work, wrote some background work, and then um, he had a very bad stroke, so he was no longer able to work. My mom jumped in. And she became the queen of dress extras. Um, now tell, she our, tell our folks at home what that means, dress extra. A dress extra is someone who is, can be counted on to have the, the best clothes and the best hair and the best makeup to be with the president or be in first class on the Poseidon. They play the, they kind of do the, they play the upscale. Very people, upscale. Basically. Yes. The posh people that yes. are joining us from uh, across the pond. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mom was. Are there people across the pond watching? They're actually probably oh, are. Okay. We, have, we have fans everywhere, Dan. Oh, that's, that's right, it. all over the world. <laughs> um, okay, so your folks were so, in it. Yeah, they were in it, and then I kind of did it as a summer thing. There was a film called Soylent Green. If anyone remembers that, I was there when we learned that Soylent Green was people. Um, that was back at MGM, back oh, in the 70s. Oh, I'm really day. dating myself. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay. Yeah. Um, and so then I, I've done so many other things in between, and, and I did a little more background work, and I worked at Central Casting doing background casting. So you were on the other side of the I was on the other while. side, and that's when I found out that a desk job where I was chained to the phone for 12 hours a day mm -hmm. under fluorescent lighting mm -hmm. in a room with... Twelve other yelling casting directors was not for me. Well, it's actually the nightmare job. I think for all of us in this industry, that's what we all have run screening from is, is desk jobs. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so so uh, I started doing some background, and then I just kind of fell into standing in. Mm -hmm. There was a, a feature. You film. fell into standing. I, yes. Let's, I fell let's just go into, with that pun for a moment. Well, folks. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I had to levitate to my there first stand-in <laughs> job. It was a Poltergeist Two. Mm -hmm the other side mm -hmm. and Craig T. Nelson if you remember him yes. um, I was his height and all of a sudden I got a call one day from Central Casting asking if I could fill in for the other stand-in who hated the stand-in job so I, I ran to Boss Films in the marina and it was all this blue screen getting in a harness and going up on cables and flying around wow. for two weeks but that was my first stand-in job, and that led to every other stand-in job I've had since. So it's not really a okay, cable. Well, it's not just standing there. There is actual stuff that happens. There's, right. A lot of sitting around, mm -hmm. like we all do, though. Uh -huh. but, Sometimes, but there's food. I, there's food. <laughs> there's, there's great food. Sometimes there's photo doubling involved, right. where if you look enough like the actor, they can put you in the actor's wardrobe and then shoot you from behind, mm -hmm. or in the case of... Um, Ruthless people. When Judge Reinhold was having police chase him all over town, that was me dressed as a clown mm -hmm. driving that car. I gotta all go and watch town. that movie now. Thanks but, a lot. Uh, I know what I'm doing. This yeah, weekend. yeah. I'll be streaming all of Dan's. So, so we're here. We're here to save wear and tear on the actor. 
Exactly. The actor yeah. doesn't have to come in, doesn't have to be there for the lighting and all that, then we happily do that, and that's how we're, we're still here. I think, I think there have been stand-ins since the 20s. Well, oh yeah, I mean, because there used to be old, you'd see old photographs, they used to put with, with a stand-in when they truly did sort of look like. Uh -huh. They put them in the same wardrobe oh, right. and make them as though they, right. they were having tea together or whatever. <laughs> so, which, of course, I'm sure you do all the time. Yes. You have tea with our kids. <laughs> now, a couple of people are asking if they could see the wall behind us, and that's actually why we came over here today, because there's this really cool mural over here that has all kind of ABC stuff and stuff that is shot at this studio, which is like, you know, we got this general hospital stuff here. This, this and you studio mentioned, being 100 years old. Right, that's right. And you were talking about... You know this lady right here. Yeah, this this is Robin Blake. Mm -hmm. She has retired. I believe she, well, I'm not going to say how old she is, but, but um, this would have been back in the 60s. She, she was one of the, I can't read, I think she was Nurse mm -hmm. Judy. Nurse Ratchet. But uh, <laughs> here she is with Emily, I can't think of her last right. name, uh, Nurse Jessie. She's Nurse Jessie, back when we all used to watch it. Yeah. Um, on General Hospital, which did not originally start here at the studio, but moved here, I think maybe in the I think it was in the seventies. The seventies, early seventies or something. And have yeah. been shooting here ever since. Yeah. And of course, you know, we're we're on this wall too. That little show, Grey's Anatomy. Oh is yeah. Is here. Right. They got us on the um, wall. With, and with, I don't think any other show has had, had yeah. part of the text here. Right. And actually, oh, there's oh, there's more of us up here. Look. Oh, look. oh yeah. It's a cornucopia of Grey's Anatomy. Up and down here. <laughs> this would have been probably season. That's one our or that's two. our first. I think that's one of our first uh, publicity photos, actually. Yeah. Because we had that. Yeah. That, that's the one we used for everything for a while. Um, and then just going on farther down, there's just more ABC stuff. Some of our older viewers will remember. There's like you know, there's Family Feuds on there. Well, Welcome Back, Cotters on this there. Is Mr. Belvedere. Mr. Belvedere's on here. Um, was that? What was that? That was oh, that's Fran Tarkington, but I don't know what that's right. for. Right, and that's John Davidson. Davidson. And that's uh, and then people will know. Oh, it's probably no funny song videos, ABC Sports, all sorts of stuff. The Olympics. And Just to show the that? history, all the history, all the history in this little tiny weird alley next yeah. to the commissary. Yeah, that nobody ever sees. That nobody ever sees except us because yeah. we decided to wander over here today. Uh huh. So okay, getting back to. You know, the real here. Um, tell us some of the the skills or things that you need to do stand-in or background stuff. I, I would think a big one would be kind of patience and, you yeah, know. Patience and, and being able to anticipate. That's mm -hmm. a, a big part of it because okay. there's no other medium where time is money is more relevant. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to waste a second looking for the second team. Um, Which is why we're doing this at lunch, and I also told everybody where we were going, just in case. Just in I'm case. So if we're, you need Dan, he's with me. We're not far away, but it is it is our lunch hour. Yes, yes. Um, and I had a later call today. Yes, you did. You just, you just but, came in. But uh, I expect to be here until we finish tonight. Here for the rest of the day. Yeah, so that, that's a thing, too. I mean, you can have long days, short days. It's kind of at the whim of whatever our schedule is, and whoever you're, you're uh, standing in for on the day. Right. So... Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Some people yesterday worked an hour and got paid for eight. Nice work. Yeah. You can get it. Uh huh. There, there's a reason to get in this business if for no other, right there. Um, so. But then the days you work 16 hours and it's kind it, of it, blood it, money. It, well, you know, it balances but out. It, it does. amortizes it out. It really, eventually. it really does. That's how I managed to. Uh, That's how we all justify it. Yeah. So this leads rather neatly into my next question. What's the best thing about your job? The best thing about my job, I'd say, is truly the fact that I'm here. Mm -hmm. I have been on other shows, and I've been really fortunate because I've worked on so many different shows, and very few of them would I ever say, oh, that was a nightmare. Mm -hmm. I, I know people who've worked on shows, and they've hated it because from top down, there was all kinds of tension and dissension and, and problems. That's not here, and it's really not any place I've been. Um, so I love the fact that this is my second family. I mean, I see this Gray's family much more than I see my own. Yeah. <laughs> we're working. We, we all, we've all kind of discussed that. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah. We know far too much about each other on this show. <laughs> yeah. How many people have you talked to? Gosh, I don't know. How many people have I talked to, guys? Tell me. Um, probably, I don't know, nine or ten now, maybe? We, yeah. had a, we had a bit of a break toward the end of the year because it got kind of hectic before the holidays. And I just started to back up uh, last week. So we're just So back. you probably have another hundred people to talk to. At about. least. Yeah. We, this little, yeah, we got years. But we of have this years. Yeah, we have fine. seasons. Yeah. We, actually, we'll just have to keep the show going just so that I can continue to do this, basically. For no other reason. <laughs> so finally, let me ask you: um, if uh, what kind of advice could you give to people who are wanting to, to get into this this crazy business of ours? Um, it is a, it is kind of a crazy business, mm -hmm. but it's it can be a lot of fun. Um, I think number one is you need to if you're going to be working in this kind of a situation, you, you could be a stand-in on a student film. But here in the U.S., you, you need to be a member of SAG-AFTRA. Right. And we can actually mention that a little bit. You guys uh, merged. You were originally, you had your own guild, is that correct? There and was you, the Screen Extras right, Guild when right. I first joined in 1981, mm -hmm. which apparently had split off of the Screen Actors Guild, I think, in the 40s. Back in the day, yeah. And then the Screen Extras Guild and Screen Actors Guild you merged. You guys re-merged. What did re that happen? That happened. Did that happen? It's been a few years now. Hasn't yeah, it's been a yeah. few years. But it's sa it's SAG after now, right? Well, you after right. We we first we merged back into the Screen Actors Guild, and then the Screen Actors Guild and After are the American Federation of Television and Radio <laughs> Artists <laughs> merged together. So now it's one union, um, and that was a few years ago. Yeah. So I think that's that's something if you're going to work on a major production, whether television, commercials, features, you have to be a member of that union, and it's not easy becoming a member, but it's people old, do it. Yeah, it's that old kind of uh, catch twenty-two of you can't get a job unless you're in the union, but you can't get in the union unless you've had a job. Yeah. So. Yeah, uh, my first my job that got me into the union was uh, there was a series, a short-lived series called After Mash. You remember that? I do, with Jamie Farr. Yes. And uh, Harry, Christopher was and in it. Harry and Harry Morgan. Morgan. Yes. Um, it was supposed to be stateside in Missouri after the Korean War. Right. And one day I was just doing background work as an orderly in this hospital. And Another medical show. You're in a bit of a I'm rut, Dan. I just want to say. <laughs> I've done a few. <laughs> Um, but then, strangely, I got a call from the production office after I had done that bit uh, at the Veterans Administration, the other VA, mm -hmm. um, where I'd run into a building, run inside the building, right. and uh, they said, they asked me if I was a member of the Screen Actors Guild, and I said no, and they said, well, would you like to be, and I said, well, I sure would, and they said, okay, well, uh, you be working tomorrow. Within an hour, they had delivered a script to my door with my one line wow. um, and I had to go and join the Screen Actors Guild. But that's, sometimes that's how it happens. Right, yeah. You're they just in the right place at the right time, everyone own. has their own story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and every stand-in I've met has a different story about where they just happen to be in the right place at the right time and someone said, oh, you might be good to, mm -hmm. would you do this? Not everyone has the temperament for it. Right. Um, Does it pay to, in terms of background work, register? You know how we, we use our various uh, background artist companies. You know, there's the old, well-known central casting that right. we all talk about in various yeah. other places, and, and that's still going strong. Right. You right. can you can start with central casting if you're not a member of the union. Mm -hmm. You can do background work at the non-union rate. Mm -hmm. And sometimes then you'll see if this is something you want to pursue, if you stick with that and you eventually get union vouchers along the way, which happens, then you are eligible to join the union. Right. And then once you do that, you can, you've met assistant directors, sometimes you meet a director of photography, you just maybe drop a hint that maybe you'd like to stand in if it's possible sometime. Sometimes it happens. 
I think other people have brought that same thing up that it's about the connections, about the networking, about the people that you know. About a lot of it's luck, a lot of it's being in the yeah. right place at the right time. And again, as we've also talked about, everybody has their own journey. Right. But everybody always kind of comes back to it's because I knew this person and we'd worked together before, or they knew someone who needed someone. And, that's... and so I think that's kind of what we can always tell people is is meet as many people as you can and get yourself out there and do student films and Absolutely. do no budget, low budgets, and you know because those people. Those youngsters of today are the people who are going to be running this place tomorrow. The poor are going to be working for. So that's right. So that's kind of you know what you got to do. Um, let's see. Is there any Disney stand? In? Oh, there. I see. If you have Twitter, you're on Twitter, aren't you, Dan? I am. Yeah, we'll put we'll put your your Twitter handle up there. Okay. What, what it's, tell us what your Twitter handle is. Uh, it's just De Niro. D A N E R O. De Niro. There you go. Yeah. The other De Niro. The other. De Niro. <laughs> Not the one who drove the taxi. Right. <laughs> Well, cool. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for well, taking time out you. of your lunch. And to thank you all for again. for watching and being fans of the show. It's it's so great. Twelve years, man. Yeah. Good times. I think we're good for another twelve. Don't so. you? Yeah. I don't yeah. keel over in my porch brush. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dan. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs>